Windows Compact Embedded, also known as Windows C, was a major player in the mobile device world of the 2000s. There were numerous Windows C devices geared towards home use, such as the old handheld PCs. This evolved into somewhat more modern Chinese netbooks and devices like Windows mobile phones, all of which were built on the Windows C platform. In this video, we are going to explore whether it's possible to run Windows C applications on a desktop Windows using an incomplete open source project. Welcome to Decode, and we'll start in just a few seconds. We are excited to announce that we are launching memberships on YouTube, Patreon, and Buy Me A Coffee. By becoming a member on any of these platforms, you will gain exclusive access to our private Discord channels, where we share sneak peeks of upcoming content. This initiative is more than just a membership. It's a way to directly support and speed up our video creation process. Your support is invaluable in helping us to produce the content you love. Join us and be a part of our growing community. First, it's important to understand that every Windows C application, similar to every desktop Windows application, is referred to as a portable executable. We can usually identify a portable executable by its file extension, such as .exe and .dll. A portable executable is a file with a specific structure that contains vital information needed by an operating system to recognize and interpret what the file is. This includes the application code and its resources. In addition to .exe and .dll, there are a few more file extensions for portable executables. For example, .cpl files are typically control panel applets, and .scr files are screensavers. These files are still considered as portable executables, but they have different extensions. Windows uses these extensions to automatically identify and place them in the appropriate settings. Sometimes files with custom extensions might require a slightly different method to launch them. Now that we understand that Windows C and desktop Windows executables share the same format, you might wonder why we can't simply run any Windows C application on Windows 11. There are a few reasons for this. The first issue is the difference in CPU architecture. Most modern smartphones use ARM CPUs, which are quite powerful. Windows C devices also predominantly run on ARM CPUs. This means that the majority of the applications we are discussing are compiled specifically for ARM CPUs. On the other hand, your Windows computer is likely running on an x86 architecture. This difference means that the binary code within most Windows C applications contains instructions incompatible with the desktop CPU. Therefore, your desktop CPU cannot simply execute these instructions. To address this issue, we have two main options – emulation or using an actual ARM CPU. However, we'll set that aside for now, since there are some x86 applications available, and let's focus on what we can do with only an x86 CPU. If the CPU architecture is the same, you might wonder if it's possible to run a Windows C application on a desktop Windows system. The answer is yes, it's possible, but there is another issue to consider, which is fortunately somewhat solvable. Let's take the example of a solitaire game from Windows CE that is compiled for x86 architecture. When we try to run it, we find that Windows doesn't allow it to run, stating that it's not a valid Win32 application. But what does this really mean? Let's delve into this and find out. Let's compare this solitaire game from Windows C with the solitaire from Windows XP. I've chosen the XP version because it's simpler and still works on Windows 11. To do this comparison, we'll use a tool called PViewer, which comes bundled with a program known as System Informer. 
System Informer is an advanced alternative to the traditional task manager. Let's use this tool to analyze and understand the differences between these two versions of Solitaire. When we open the Solitaire game from Windows CE using PE Viewer, it successfully loads, indicating that it's a valid portable executable and everything appears to be in order at first glance. However, there is one notable exception the subsystem and its version. This aspect is crucial, because when Windows creates a process and loads an executable, it checks this specific structure and the subsystem fields. These fields indicate the operating system and its version with which the executable is compatible. In our case, the value displayed is Windows CE. It's somewhat puzzling that it's labeled as CUI, given that it's actually a graphical user interface program. This could potentially be a bug on the part of PE Viewer. The version field in the executable is another critical factor. Windows checks this value as well. If the version in the executable is higher than the current version of Windows, it will display the same error message. This is why applications from newer versions of Windows often can't run on older versions. They encounter the same error due to incompatible version requirements. In our case, we know that the current version of Windows is 10. The Solitaire game from Windows CE requires at least Windows version with the major number 6, which corresponds to Windows Vista in the desktop environment. The reason it requires this version is that the application is taken from Windows CE 6. So, there are various subsystems recognized by Windows, and we need to find a way to make the system recognize this executable as one designed for desktop Windows. There are several approaches to achieve this. As I mentioned earlier, the portable executables are just structures saved as files, meaning that we can modify this file and change any of these fields. So, by altering subsystem fields, we can bypass the subsystem compatibility issue, allowing the application to run on a desktop version of Windows. Now, let me introduce you to the software that enables us to run Windows C applications. It's called Windows CE Compatibility Layer, and I am the creator of this tool, which I developed almost five years ago. You can download it from my GitHub profile using the CI's Artifacts tab. As of now, the compatibility layer includes several files, one of which is subsystemtool.exe. As you might have inferred, Subsystem Tool is a program designed to modify the subsystem and its version for any portable executable file. This is how we can make the Windows C Solitaire executable to be compatible with desktop Windows. All you need to do is drag and drop the Solitaire executable into the Subsystem Tool. Without any additional arguments, the tool will automatically set the executable to use the desktop Windows subsystem. If we restart the PE Viewer, you will see that subsystem has been altered. Let's try running Solitaire again. Unfortunately, it still fails, because it can't locate the core DLL file. This indicates that Solitaire relies on some functions within the missing core DLL file. To understand what specific functions it needs, we can use PA Viewer. It turns out that all the missing functions Solitaire requires are from Core DLL. This suggests that this library contains the complete API necessary for the game. Surprisingly, most APIs in Windows CE are similar to those in desktop Windows. The main difference lies in the storage location of these APIs. In desktop Windows, APIs are spread across various files like User32, Shell32, and others, typically found in the System32 folder. This leads to a clear conclusion. We can craft our own library, which we'll call Core DLL. This library will export the functions that the game requires. When the game attempts to access a function, our library will simply redirect it to the corresponding desktop API. 
This approach is the essence of the Windows C compatibility layer. So, what we need to do is to take the core DLL file from the compatibility layer and place it directly into the solitaire game folder. Now when we launch Solitaire again, the compatibility layer prompts us asking if we want to attach a debugger. Let's proceed without the debugger. Unfortunately, we encounter another error. This time it's a failed Win32 call, unable to load a certain library. I've identified the issue, the game is trying to load packcards.dll library which holds shared resources for card games. To resolve this, I'll place the library file inside the solitaire folder and then run the game once more. And this time, it's successful. We can now see an unusual version of solitaire originally not designed for desktop windows. Impressively, the game works just fine. The settings dialog is shown here, but it's missing a key element. Windows C also displays an OK button. This button is created at the system level using the Create Window API. Windows C includes an extra flag for this purpose, which is not utilized in desktop windows. Despite the absence of an OK button, we can still submit a dialog by pressing Enter or double-clicking on a card, which accomplishes the same action. Now, let's talk about the platform. We understand that the majority of Windows C applications are designed for ARM CPU architecture, and there is a compatibility layer built for ARM. However, it remains untested, as I've never had a proper Windows ARM device before. I recently purchased one, and I'm currently working on fixing the compatibility layer on it. To stay updated on the ARM software testing and other developments, consider subscribing to the channel. Additionally, I frequently share small but intriguing updates on Discord, so feel free to join there as well. Now, let's talk about Windows C compatibility layer limitations. Firstly, the app you're seeing is the only one that currently works. Other apps I've discovered for x86 need more advanced APIs, which require extensive manual work, even though most are just basic wrappers of desktop APIs. The only other functioning program is a stylus test application from Windows CE, which is simpler but still somewhat works. Another issue is that this project was developed 5 years ago when I was younger and less experienced. At that time, I had a limited understanding of the C language, which led to the creation of bad code. It's highly likely that the code, particularly in subsystem tool, has memory leaks. When attempting to enhance compatibility with another application by implementing the missing APIs, problems frequently arise that require debugging. This process is extremely challenging and due to my limited time and skills, I find it difficult to undertake. Another issue involves broken API functions. I developed some APIs that, for example, manipulate memory. This can be unstable and might cause errors, and debugging these errors is often more challenging than usual. So I will keep the link to the repository in the comments. Maybe this video will help the project to get its audience. Contributions, of course, are welcome. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share it with others. Don't forget to subscribe for more great content and leave a comment below. Also, consider joining our membership for exclusive perks. See you next time!